Uh, so I will do a presentation on behalf of my team. Um, we are working at the Institute for, uh, of Inorganic Chemistry and Electrochemistry of Tbilisi State University. And um, thank you. Um, I will um, thank Dr. Gia for this opportunity. Well, our presentation is about sorbents obtained from cellulose containing waste for water purification. We all know that environmental pollution by industrial emissions is currently really emerging a problem all around the world. And significant part of the wastewater of various origins enters the environment without treatment. Um, and of course, it will negatively affect human health, the environment and the economy itself. Large amounts of heavy metals like lead, cadmium, arsenic, chromium, copper, nickel, cobalt, zinc, and others uh, that generally are presented in wastewater can be caused uh, by waste accumulation and uh, by increased human activity or industrial accidents and can cause various diseases. So what was being offered by us? So among different physicochemical methods of detoxification, adsorption stands out and well, it's considered as universal process. Uh, to completely remove these toxic impurities. And um, actually the solution of practical problem is determined by the choice of the sorbents. Uh, and uh, there is important to choose the optimal physiochemical properties and cause. So the purpose of our work was uh, to study the sorption properties of carbon uh, materials, um, carbonaceous uh, materials obtained from secondary raw uh, uh, waste. It was hazelnut and walnut shells. And uh, that was prepared by the technology uh, we, um, we proceed and we have here at the institution. Uh, and um, uh, was developed the technology uh, which um, allows us to obtain carbon materials with a high surface area. Actually, we have already tried this technology and used for many types of raw materials. It was used tires, hazelnut, walnut shells, nectarine kernel, sawdust, plastic, etc. But um, for this presentation, we choose to concentrate only on hazelnut and walnut shells and present our findings. Uh, and uh, so just to show you um, uh, the reactor vessels uh, that have been uh, in hand developed by um, our team members at the institution. So the first one on the right corner uh, was the lab model. Um, it was the first model we have de developed here. And um, uh, the uh, furnace, stainless steel furnace, which is shown on the left corner. It's actually the furnace we are using nowadays, and it also acts as a catalyst. So the process of uh, this um, uh, technology is one stage, and what is uh, good about it, it doesn't require preliminary processing of raw materials. So using this technology, carbon materials can be um, obtained from recycled organic waste, uh, and the process and uh, the outcomes are really cheap, efficient, and not time consuming. So to show uh, in this um, presentation slide is depicted um, actually uh, the um, um, scanning electron, uh, the uh, pictures that were uh, developed by scanning electron microscopes, same. Uh, so those are uh, walnut shells, uh, hazelnut shells, and are uh, compared with a well-known commercially available activated carbon bow. Uh, well, uh, it's mostly known um, with Russian name like Birozov Activirovne Ugel and uh, birch, uh, birch charcoal, uh, uh, birch charcoal activated carbon. So you can see that it's quite uh, porous um, uh, versus uh, activated carbon. Uh, carbon. So uh, what we can see here uh, when um, talking about physical and chemical properties of obtained uh, carbon materials. So those um, measures were uh, being done by bed surface areas and volumes uh, and uh, uh, been measured microfors. Uh, and was used um, capillary nitrogen con uh, condensation 
and chemical composition on a scanning electron microscope and been um, uh, evaluated ash content. And of course, uh, here as well, we had um, uh, for comparison, uh, commercially activated carbon. So we can see that, of course, the commercially obtained carbon has better surface area, but not that much um, uh, difference in microphores. And uh, actually, it's quite comparable with that one that's uh, nowadays uh, commercially uh, in practice. So to go more in detail about the uh, particle, um, particle size and function of, of reaction temperature, reaction time, and reaction velocity, so it was quite logically uh, comprehended and um, compared. So high reaction temperature causes high nitrogen surface area uh, that causes shorter reaction time and high rate um, nitrogen surface area. So here are uh, depicted um, uh, pictures that shows um, how it uh, corresponds and how it, uh, how it correlates. Um, we also measured uh, the um, physical and uh, chemical properties of uh, obtained um, carbon materials um, with uh, the composition. So, and to com also we um, of course compared them uh, with uh, commercially available uh, one. Uh, the um, analysis and chemical composition were measured by Brucker in Quantax and uh, uh, um, of course, uh, so um, the commercial activated carbon were used. So here are shown all the uh, composition that were found in our um, samples and uh, compared with activated carbon. Uh, we also presented uh, our uh, team, our infrastructure, Technopark, uh, working environment. So here are uh, shown Skyray uh, spectrometer, uh, Micrometric, Gemini 7, uh, Hitachi, uh, Perkin Elmer. So those are our equipment and um, our measures uh, being done by our uh, infrastructure. So, um, and the most important thing, so we decided to concentrate our interest or for uh, really important heavy metals uh, that generally are presented in wastewater uh, and um, uh, tasted them for uh, absorption capacity. So you can see on the table uh, degrees of extraction and absorption capacity. So you can actually see that uh, lead has the better absorption capacity compared to cobalt. So cobalt is the is the less uh, successful one. Uh, the uh, measure was done uh, by mixed uh, model solutions. So they all were presented in solution. Uh, the temperature of solution were 25, 27 degrees centigrade. And uh, the absorption time was about 30, 45 minutes. Uh, actually for lead, it was much less um, enough, like five, 10 minutes were enough. As results of time shown uh, in the table, so parameters, uh, um, parameters characterizing uh, the absorption by this adsorbent are approximately the same, actually. Uh, but due, this is due to the fact that the molecules of substance dissolving in water uh, decompose into ions, which are uh, in a hydrate state. In this case, the solute is um, adsorbed on the surface of adsorbent in the form of hydrated ions. And therefore, for a given metal, hydrated ions are adsorbed in the same way on different adsorbents. Uh, so what was found and what are the main outcomes of our research that actually it's uh, depicted in so-called uh, uh, leotropic series or Hofmeister series. So the ions of heavy metals that were used at adsorptives can be arranged in the following row, like uh, adsorption value for the lead, uh, the better, and for the cobalt is uh, less. And correspondingly, it um, correlates with the radius, ionic radius of these metals. 
So the um, bigger radius was uh, for the elite and the smaller radius for uh, cobalt. Uh, and in this case, well, uh, absorption capacity, well, uh, for lead is the maximum in this case, and for the uh, cobalt ions is, uh, is minimum. So to come to conclusion, uh, it was found that the nature of absorption by these adsorbents are the same. Actually, for given metal, hydrated ions are adsorbed in the same way on different adsorbents, but the larger the crystal radius of an ion with the same charge, the better it's adsorbed. Uh, so, um, as we have already um, said, the sorption capacity of lead was better in these uh, parameters we uh, done, and uh, the minimum was copper. Uh, it has to be uh, mentioned that um, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, pH uh, for the um, uh, for the solution that we used as a model solution. Uh, so the best results for all four um, uh, heavy metals were in the range of three five uh, for copper, lead, and um, iron ions. Cobalt required more acidic um, uh, acidic area. Uh, so uh, this is um, our work. We uh, consider to continue it and uh, to develop and to, to see what else we can offer uh, to, uh, for the purification of real sample wastewaters. So it was mixed uh, of model of model solutions. Thank you for your attention. Thanks. Thank you, Leila. Thanks. Any questions, please? I have two questions with okay. your permission. First question is uh, regarding if uh, your carbonized sorbent from uh, organic waste is good for uh, use in pharmaceutical purposes, for example. Okay, we are um, at this moment testing uh, the um, model solutions and are trying to see as uh, good the sorbents will work. So we have model solutions for the um, persistent pharmaceutical uh, uh, components that is really emerging nowadays. And we will see, we are going to test this in the um, real, uh, real wastewater as well. Um, at this moment, we just started to uh, do this. And um, I can already say that it shows quite, um, quite good um, outcomes. And we will. We are working in that direction. Thank you. Thanks. And the second question, is maybe it is a specific questions, but uh, I would like to to know if you test, for example, obtain sorbent for decontamination from uh, liquid radionuclide, for example. Okay. Uh, so in the institutions, they have been done such kind of works, yes, and the institution has publications in the field and um, not only radionuclides, uh, can be said that uh, our, our method been applied for the infectious diseases. One of the clinics here in Georgia applied the sorption system in their discharge uh, sewage um, and uh, it worked well. So the sorbents are working uh, as for uh, radioactive um, uh, contamination, as for infectious diseases, but more work are required, actually. Okay. But at this Thank moment, you. it's really um, promising. Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks Any a lot. Any questions? More questions? Okay. Thank you again for your. Very, very interesting information, especially for Thank me. Thank you.